ringing the bell. What's that look like? You can see everything from there. Frog tape. Every time you use it, pulls a bloody paint off. What's the, what's the dessert about? Well, you eat all your food, and you want to do your pudding. Basically, if I get all that done, my pudding is going to be, I'm going to finally sort this out. Oh, be a bubble. Oh, be a bubble. Got glue on my eyebrow. It's all the glue on my veins. Blue. Good morning. Tuesday morning. Matt here. What's joining me? Took about 20 minutes to get that right. It's not even that good. Right, um, yeah, so I didn't work yesterday uh, because I didn't feel particularly well and had loads of uh, bookwork to catch up on and just pr oh, prices mainly, quotes. So I just thought I'd get them out of the way. Um, what have I done? I've been here for an hour or so and I finished off these drawers. They're in last week's video. Right, okay, cool. What am I going to do? Well, I still feel a bit rough, to be fair. Um, right then, so... Uh, what we're going to do today is we've got a solid lip, these drawers I made. Uh, I've got these offcuts here from the shelves from last week. Some I'll just have to scrap because there's nothing I'm going to do with that. It's just going to be dangerous trying to sort that out. I'll get probably four out of that, two or three out of that, and four out of that. Um, which are actually really nice pieces, believe it or not, underneath. They're lovely pieces. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a wee bit of filming of just me processing that I guess and then I'm going to jump on and I'm going to do these shelves I'm going to get these shelves sorted I'm going to finally sort all that out so I'll probably just do a dry run of that and a bit of filming of that um it's not painted yet so it would just be like a, I just want to do a dry run really I just want to make sure it's going to look all right um yeah and I'll pick you up in a little bit
Right, um, that's it, done. Got um, I've got a couple more to route out, in all honesty, but I've, I've really, I've really got to go. So, um, I take literally the advantage of filming stuff, and I've mentioned this before, actually. Two lads, uh, that did a lot of sort of training me up. Shout out Mark, shout out John. They used to time everything. I don't even think they knew they were doing it. But when you time stuff, you know how long you're going to be doing something. So that route room, because I've done my template here the other day, that told me how long it took to do. Obviously, once I made the template, you can't quantify that amount of time. But once I made the template and route of one shelf, one side of a shelf, all I've then got to do is count the shelves and count the sides and times it, and you're done. Knock off a little bit of time for fannying around. Right then, um, that looks great. Obviously, I've not put the, but that will look really, really good. That's gonna be, it's a nice dark, rich blue there, haven't it painted? Obviously, there'll be a pelmet across the top. Um, that can get sprayed. I've redrilled all my holes. I've just given this a dummy run. You know, like I mentioned the other day, these shelf pegs, you can see, it's got to sand the edges, obviously, of the shelves. I'll just put one in, but you can see what I mean now by that little bit of slack. And that just means that shelf will never come out. And it means that when you pull it in, you're sort of laughing because it, it connects. Um, yeah. And I think that'll be, I think that's the strongest bet, to be honest with you. You know, a bit of timber dowel banged into one of these brass insets. You know, it's a lot stronger than a, than a metal shelf peg and a bit of MDF, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm really going to be really... And the door's obviously on the bottom. That's it, walking to the bench mat. Really looking forward to fitting that. I just can now see it's going to look good. Uh, I've done all the drawers as well. Um, you see they're taped up and then I, I start stacking them upside down at some point. So the weight's keeping them all down. Just saves on clamps. That tape's strong enough. Uh, I'll just use this tape actually, Pinnacle Masking Tape. I get that for about £1.50 a roll. And it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. As long as you don't leave it on for more than a couple of days, you're absolutely laughing. It's bloody strong as well. It doesn't take paint off either. Um, yeah, you know, Euro, all of them, all the frog tape. Every time you use it, it pulls the bloody paint off. Um, even if you use the stuff that's designed not to. Right, uh, what are we going to do tomorrow then? Do you know what I might do tomorrow? I shouldn't do it, but this is doing my fucking head in. Um, I made a little jig here. This is for cutting the timber dowels, actually. So what you do is you just rebate a bit of timber, sit the timber dowel links. I've bought them in like 300 mil lengths. Set your fence a bit further back, slide it over to the fence, run it through the saw, slide it over to the fence, run it through the saw, and just hope that none of it goes down there. Which brings me on to what I'm talking about. This dust extraction does my head in. I'm thinking about remaking all of this um, and redoing all of it. Just basically remaking a bit, a shroud to go around here, a shroud to go around here with brush seals, sealing all of that because it all just escapes out of there. And because that's spinning at whatever, 6,000 RPMs, when it escapes, it just fucking goes everywhere, which is why I've got these air filtrations sitting directly above there. I'll normally have that door open, but it's, what's happening is this, a lot of this is sort of residual from other bits and bobs, because but if I can get it, if I can, the, the only tool I've got in here that makes a bloody mess, because I've got all my first tool stuff, is that. It doesn't make that much of a mess, don't get me wrong, but if I can sort that out, then I can keep it clean, because I used to bloody hoover this for, but I just fucking bother at the moment. Right, um, see you in the morning. It's 10 o'clock already. Wednesday morning. How are you? Uh, welcome back. Welcome back, guys. What are we doing today? Well, I've done these. They're done. Why is it 10 o'clock? I don't know. Sometimes that just happens. I got, I was fannying around. Um, but what have I done? So um, if you look up on the screen now, I've got these floating shelves to make, which is actually the last job for this kitchen. Although I've still got to sort the drawers, fit them, sand and paint the doors and the frames, do a bit of assembly in there. There's loads of little jobs and I've got to do the corn, the cornice on the spindle moulder. That is the last job I've got to make something. So that's the last job. I'm going to make that drawer actually, but that's the last job that sort of is a, you know, once I get that going, I can then know how long it's going to take to finish it. Now, I don't know if you remember at the beginning of the year, um, I did... Um, this media unit 
Well, that was waiting for that to get um, plastered, finished and plastered. That's now done. There's a picture of it. I got done last week. So I've got these shelves, which I made in January, I think, or February. February, yeah, to go on that media unit. They can now be installed. So I've just got to get it booked in. But I had a bit of a problem when I did these. I don't know if you can see, but the joints were a little bit open on the front, but not the back. And I normally try and cut them the other way so that it's over 45 degrees, so that when you glue them together, the gap is at the back and that's where the glue squeezes out rather than the front. Um, now they are square. They are bang on square. So it is just a case of, I think this doesn't go to less than, doesn't go over 45, basically. Um, which didn't transpire to be a problem when I did the new cap cut cases because I guess they were just a bit easier to put together. Um, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I've done them before on the track, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them all cut and then I'm going to go on the track saw and just retweak them all. Um, it'd be a pain to cut them all on the track saw. If I cut them all using my jig um, and I've got a little bit of an extra stick because on the bottom I've got a fit of light. So I've just checked it in a six mil groove, ignore the tear out and it's not the right depth. And these, these are designed to fit in six mil, but for whatever reason, they're always a bit slack. However, they always stay in. Um, yeah, so we're going to get that grooved out as well. Just got to figure out how I'm going to do it all. And then, a little bit like when you tell your kids, oh, what's, for, what's for dessert, Dad? Well, eat all your food, and then I'll give you, give you pudding. Well, basically, if I get all that done, my pudding is going to be, I'm going to finally sort this out. I'm dying to sort that out, because I want to get rid of the dust. <laughs> Amongst you will notice that the old, um, where is it? The old TS55 came out. Um, yeah, basically, this thing here just won't get the angle I want, which is a bit unfortunate. It perhaps predates when people were fanning around with half a degrees, I don't know. But basically, I want to cut these ideally at 45 and a half degrees. And you'll see, actually, yeah, this is a good example. See, there's a slight gap, it's touching there, 
and that's what you want because any glue that builds up you want it to build up on the back and fill like a gap at the back and perhaps squeeze out of the back you don't want it to create a gap on the front um i mean them other shells have turned out pretty good you you know at the end of the day you've got to sand and fill them and whatnot here we are it's a good example look just a slight gap at the back so you know it's touching at the front um so i did these on the on the panel saw i did all of them on the panel saw actually and then um yeah i just retrimmed these by half a degree on the track saw but kept these because these would be an absolute nightmare to cut on the track saw though i have done it before um so it didn't work out too bad in the end of the world so i've got those three there and these three here uh, and i've got a, on the bottom of them on a couple of them at least one anyway at least one row of shelves we're going to put that lighting groove in that i showed you this morning i haven't got a lot of time left now because it's um I took a lot longer because I had to recut every one, but I'm not I'm not bothered because uh, it's done. But I can't understand this. I've started taking this apart. This will be quite easy to do. This is just my template. You can see that needs redoing. Uh, I'm not going to put a bit of Perspex back because I haven't got any. I thought I did have some, but actually I might have some. But anyway, um, what the hell is this? What is this about? Oh, I feel like this has been put in by someone else. Because none of the holes line up. It's riveted. Nothing else has been riveted on. It's not any material of anything else on this saw that I can see. It's kind of quite rough. I don't know whether someone put that on there to stop things getting stuck up there. I don't know. But if you think about it, the blade spins that way. So it's going to be kicking the dust up. Well, <laughs> why is that... That's stopping the that's stopping loads of dust getting straight into there initially. There's a tiny gap down the back, but you know, unless I get that perfectly lined up with there, so that blade's gonna go up, not and all the I'm right, aren't I? Push it through. I mean, even if the dust comes out of here, which is what I think it's designed to do, that's still surely only limiting. Oh, I don't know, unless it's creating like a bit of flow. I'm going to take it out anyway. I'm going to take it. I'm going to redo that bit as well. I'm going to take that out. It's a bit loose as well because there's, there's. I'm going to put a bit of sealant around there when I put it on. So I'm going to get going on that now. The most important. You can see how much dust is collected. Mind you, that was on the 45, so that actually won't collect a lot of dust. But yeah, I'm just going to take it apart and see how we go. Uh, probably won't film it. Me doing it, but I'll film with it the after effect, I guess. Got glue on my eyebrow. It's not a glue or baked beans. Glue. Morning. It is oh, Thursday. Is it Thursday? Fuck it, now it is, isn't it? It's the Monday. Mm, yeah. So it's a quick week. Um, done a few other little bits and bobs uh, this morning just for some, just for another little job I've got to fit in next week. Just prep that. Um, but I'm back on sorting this out because I didn't get this finished. So I'm just going to flip you around. It looks a mess. So basically I brought these Stormguard brushes from um, Toolstation, Screwfix, somewhere like that. Um, I think they both sell them. Uh, and what I've done is I've managed to, I've had to do it in two bits, but I've managed to get it in there. So this, because this undercarriage bit, the bit that holds the blade that goes backwards and swings for your 45s and that, it has to be loose because it has to move to do you can see it slides in this rebate because it has to do all your combination cuts i've managed to fit this into into it it's a right mess because i've had to do it in three bits look because you a i didn't quite have enough so i've had to cut it out i could have done it in two but you can't get that in in one without taking all this assembly out um and i've had problems taking this out before so i didn't really want it it's set perfectly at the moment so i'd rather leave it um, yeah, it looks awful, but it does look a tight seal. And then I've done here, but I cocked up here. You can see I've glued it to something and then realised that that interferes when you move it. I realised that last night, so I just, well, just the afternoon before I went home. So I've offset that now and packed it out and put a screw in, just painted it black to make it look a bit tidy. I've screwed another piece of timber into here, um, which I basically worked out. What I decided to do was work out 
how high the riving now actually needs to come for me to be able to take the blade out. Everything else I don't care about. Because I just, you know, I'm never going to do, I mean, the blade's like 350 mil. I'm never going to cut anything that big. And if I do, all I've got to do is unscrew that. I'll put a machine screw on it so it can unscrew in and out nice and easy. Um, and then, yeah, I've just done the front of this. You can see I've still got a bit of adhesive there. It is screwed. I've got a basically, I'm letting that glue go off and I'll replace that with a machine screw. Um, I'm just finding the machine screws really hard, same with this, really hard to get in because you've got to do them up by hand. So I'm just getting it in with the driver first. Uh, just purely because, yeah, I'm, yeah, and then I've got this bit here. You can see I've just ploughed the wood screw in there. I've got some adhesive on it. I've done the same on the back. I'm going to replace those like I have those with these machine screws. But it's just easier to drive a wood screw in. Sometimes you do that when you put hinges on the door. Like if you hang a door and you know you're going to take it off again, just use ordinary screws because some like machine, these stainless screws are a bit softer. So they're going to wear off a bit more as you're using them with a drill. So I just use an ordinary screw until I get it in place. Then I replace that and just do that with a screwdriver by hand. Um, or I've been using these actual bolts as well just to bolt through. Managed to get my hand in what was a hole here. I've taped some of it up just while I spray. And then again, this piece here screwed a bit of board on that and sort of glued it to that because that again will never ever the, the, that was just like a, a gap where sawdust was going and actually bloody i've got the, oh, i mean this has been in there years i remember that being cut um yeah and so this bit here is a board i've put on just just because i know that there's dust going through there and getting onto the motor. And I know that's been happening for years because these are all the plastic shavings from the bloke that owned the bloody saw before. And they're all on there. And I've already been in there and cleaned it out once. So I'm hoping this will just stop. So my thought process is, we're gonna have a, I'll do the top later in a minute. My thought process is I'm gonna get that back on there. We're gonna put a brush shield across the front of here somehow without the screws interfering with the blade. So I've basically fully enclosed that bottom ring with a brush seal. And then I also fully enclosed the top ring with a brush seal, which will then clamp top and bottom of the blade. And the advantage of a brush seal is that you can see that it should occupy the space between here and here as this moves. Look, see. So theoretically, the only place the dust can go is out any of the little holes that you've got in here, which need to exist for the motor. Um, it's, they're just not built as well. I mean, they are, they're built a lot better, but nowadays there's a lot more plastic and rubber parts on table saws and stuff, and they've improved the dust collection, haven't they? I shout to Claire. It's what YouTube's about, isn't it? Me spending possibly on an hour five now. Am I? One hour four. No, because I did some stuff this morning. Hour last night. Yeah, it's what YouTube's about, isn't it? One hour four. Um, this is what I've done so far. So I've actually finally fully ignored the dust that's on there because I haven't used it yet. This is just from pre-drilling all this. So I basically finally assembled this back. This is just the safest place to have these bolts, even though they're completely out of the way. Um, but just I can't bother to get into the details. That they're, they're about 20 mil away from the blade, so they're fine. But that's why there's only two, and it is the safest place because that blade will only ever be at that height. Oh my god, when it's being emptied, when it's being changed. So when it's down, it's out of the way. Anyway, um, but like I say, they're out of the way. I've got a little bit of glue left here, which I've got to get rid of. But basically, I've brush sealed all the way around. Can you see? So that goes around there, and then if I take this off. You will see there's that same brush seal thing I've already showed on the back. So that's brush sealed all the way around to the underneath of the table. And when this slides, I might be able to show you. But it just touches the brushes. I mean, look at that. And then hopefully them brushes aren't going to cause a problem not too close to the blade. If they are, fuck. And then round here, a bit of a mess, but they put that back bit on. Um, show you actually properly so i've put that back bit on i've had to silicon at the top because it was just there's just gaps everywhere on it um and i've managed to get the handle back on it's a little bit dusty 
Uh, I've got this piece now to go back on here. So we're on the home straight essentially. But what I'm going to do, if the plan is, this goes on here like this. And that will go, and there's another one that will go all the way around. Then I'll put two on the inside as well, on these little bits of MDF and sort of crudely glued and screwed in here. And basically, there'll be a brush seal doing the opposite on the under, on the above. But in true YouTube style, you're going to see if it works or not, because once I've done that, and I've nearly wrote today off, once I've done that, I'm going to blitz all this just pretty quickly, give it a sweep and a blowout and a hoover. I'm going to start cutting some bits and see how good it is. That'd be exciting, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'll probably do a slow motion of the dust. See how you feel about that. So, yeah, if you think I'm waffling now, it's all for, effectively, the next sequence, which is going to be... Beautiful. That is brilliant. Just tried to cut a bit, which I'll tell you about in a minute. These are done. Uh, apart, I've got to remove the bracing piece at the back just to get that drawer to shut, but that's, that will stay until I put it in transit, possibly. Uh, I only did one, I've got to do the other one, but I've got my measurements now, so that won't take long. And then obviously the fronts go on there to hide the pocket screws. Full disclosure, I fucked up. I basically routed out the wrong side of one of the drawers. Um, got to blame you, really. I was filming now, took me off the ball. Um, so, yeah, basically, if you haven't liked or subscribed by now, do just to make up for it because it's cost me a fucking draw. We haven't cost me a draw, so I'll fix it. Well, started fixing it anyway. Tomorrow I'll do that. I've got a little list of things to do tomorrow, but I've got to go across the job, so I've got to run. Um, do you like me? This is quite good, isn't it? It's like running about. What's that look like? You get to see everything then, don't you? Right, yeah. oh, that's what happens when you have nearly a whole bottle of Lucas Age. Right, see you in a bit. Well, good morning, Friday morning. Uh, only just actually, but yeah, yeah. So I finished the drawers, 
Um, I actually uh, this morning cut the transit braces out just so I could fully finish them. I uh, did this one as well because I hadn't actually prepared that one yet. Um, yeah, so there'll be a bin that goes below there. And all I need to do with this one, I was going to have that as a push to open, but the annoyance is that you, when you shut it, you have to click them in. I just thought, you might, I might as well just have a scoop because then every drawer shuts the same. It's like a soft close. So I'm going to do a little scoop in that as a little handle. Um, yeah, and then these, so like take this one for argument's sake. I mean, that's what you see on the side as well when it's all done and dusted. Obviously, they'll have a front on there. Um, yeah, and then what I'm going to do now is if you look at, um, I'll put a picture up on the screen of the cutlery inserts I'll do, I'll do them all out of solid oak. Yeah, what I actually normally do is buy oak flooring and reduce that down. Um, but I haven't done it in this case, and I just thought, well, it keeps me out of trouble doing it for the rest of the day. I kind of want to go on a bike ride in a bit anyway, because um, it's just a nice day, and I've got my bike with me. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of footage of me processing all this and turning it into what will be the start of the um, cutlery drawer. Uh, see how that goes. How far I'll get on it, I don't know, because like I said, I want to go on a bike ride. I might, you never know, I might get a fair bit done. The only downside is I ain't got the right blade for the bandsaw to cut it, so I'm gonna have to cut it on the panel saw, which is a ball lake because it's not really, you know, a bit a bit dodgy. But yeah, anyway, um a bit wasteful as well. But anyway, we'll jump on that. How do you feel about that? We're done. Right, um, yeah, this is it. It's quite nice, I think. Obviously, we'll have the drawer front on so you won't ever see any of this. Um, I've managed to give them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, not a lot. Most cutlery drawers really only come with three or four. But So they've got the six and then they've got um, steak knives and stuff, teaspoons, bits and bobs, any other business, larger things in there anything down the back, maybe like a rolling pin to bludgeon your husband with. Anyway, um, you'll notice there's a there's the odd little bit of um, tear out, and not tear out, burn. That's just, a, that's just hard really to try and get the router to go at the right. You don't want to, if, if you go too slow, it'll burn. If you go too fast, you've got, you, you sort of run the risk of it spelching and um, splitting the timber out and you'll notice on the jig, that's why I actually come in from this way Get all the way around here as a, and obviously i've reduced on the bandsaw as well so that i didn't have too much excess it was going to get caught up in it and then i'll come back in from this way um the, the real proper way to do it would be to turn it all around and redo the jig from the other side but for me if you do that you run the risk of it not lining up in the middle so i just sort of um yeah sort of just 
you know, tweak it in from that end, really, sort of gingerly. And then event, and every now and then, because of that, you'll get these little burn marks. But it's better than having a bit in the middle that doesn't line through, or better than spelching the, um, splintering all the timber out. Anyway, um, I'm not going to glue and clamp that because it, 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 there's actually quite a lot more work than he's doing there. And I want to just I'm gonna go on a bike ride, to be honest with you. That just needs sanding, routering. Uh, I'll router and chamfered edge all in these edges, and then when it's all assembled, I router an edge all on the top. So it's it's, it's not really much, that much work, but I'm not going to do it now. I've got as well. I've got I've reduced uh, quite a lot more oak. I've got loads left over now. I've got the other drawer to do. So what I'm thinking is on the other drawer, I'm going to perhaps have it so that we've got a fixed piece here, a fixed piece there. And then spinning you around all the time because this is simulating that out. Because all these re all the all these rebates here, I'm going to put those in the two front and back bits, but just a little bit looser. And I'm going to cut them a series of divides with the scoop out, just long ones, and they can drop in. Um, sort of like build it as they go, really, just around their utensils. Um, yeah. So if anyone's got any ideas about that. Uh, that that cupboard about about the drawer about um how about to make it demountable or or just like adjustable really so that they can put their utensils in because i've not as I've, i was going for you said this but I've, I've not offered them like this layout i've not actually confirmed it with them i just thought i'll give them it's too labor intensive to confirm a layout because it's just like you know how long's a knife how long's a fork so i've given them a really what i think is a decent cutlery drawer really adaptable um, loads of options but with the the utensils drawer I think I'm just gonna I want to try and do like just some looser slots and just give them a series of ones they can drop in um, so I'm gonna do Monday Monday morning so if anyone's got any ideas over the weekend they want to put it in the comments about how to do that or just anyone's they've done before um, yeah I'd sort of appreciate that really because hand in front of the yeah, I'd appreciate that really because it's not something I've done before. I mean, I know I could figure it out, but if someone's got an example of one or just something, you know, a little bit, like I say, adjustable really for them so that it's not it's not too rigid, um, that'd be great. Yeah, over 20 subscribers this week as well, which is amazing. So absolutely buzzing about that. Um, yeah, mental. Really, really happy with that. Um really really buzzing about that um yeah if you've got this far like and subscribe um it's amazing it's amazing to get 24 in one week i don't think that's the best i've had but it's oh 25 i think actually but it's pretty good it's it's well above what i thought i was going to get if i'm honest with you um and i'm still only really doing it from a sort of fun point of view um not putting too much effort in just sort of documenting what i do slowly getting better at it i think some weeks are better than others you know but then the work's a bit varied isn't it um yeah so next week i'm going to jump on that monday i've got to pick some more timber up i've got a small vanity to build uh unit so i'll, I'll jump on that as well and then there's going to be a loads and loads of sanding oiling painting now that's not really going to make for good filming um so what i've of a sort of like because i am thinking about youtube it is in the back of my mind although i'm trying to make it fly on the wall um i'm gonna go to an old customer's house and plaster his garden room so i'm gonna film that in the evenings um and yeah it might be a little bit of an interesting video just a bit more in depth on skimming um yeah anyway thanks again really really appreciate it see you next week like and subscribe